Hi, my name is Dr. Adbi al Karir, and this is basically a simple demonstration of the tracing and cephalometric analysis technique intended to help dental students at Kuwait University, but it might be useful to any orthodontic or dental student as well. While manual tracing is no longer commonly practiced in orthodontics due to the advent of digital tracing techniques, it has tremendous value in teaching you anatomy and giving you the history of th how things developed into what they are today. Use a sharp pencil and try to visualize anatomy in your head before you start making any lines. You want your lines to be continuous. I like to start by tracing the anterior cranial base, starting with cella and moving on to the anterior portion of the foramen magnum and then the greater wing of the sphenoid. And then you can trace structures anterior to cella, which include cribriform plate of ethmoid bone. With the roof of the orbit, you can then trace the orbit, the frontal bone, including the frontonasal suture, followed by the nasal bone, And then you can move on to the maxilla. I like to start from the anterior nasal spine, moving on posteriorly until I get to the posterior nasal spine of the maxilla, and then trace the anterior curvature, the palate, and the inferior portion of the maxilla. You can then move on to the mandible, starting with the symphysis, the outer cortical, outline, then the inner cortical outline of the symphysis. You can then move on to the body of the mandible, which often has two uh, outlines, one indicating the right and one indicating the left side of the patient. You can trace both outlines and then find the intermediate structure. You can then trace the condyle, if you can visualize it. Upper and lower incisors can also be traced. And then you want to also trace first molars, mandibular and maxillary first molars. You can trace the tericomaxillary fissures, which are just above the posterior nasal spine. Orion can be located posterior to the condyle, and then you can trace the soft tissue profile next, starting with the forehead, the nose, the upper lip, and then the lower lip and chin area. You can add more details to your tracing to make it look nicer. And uh, this includes tracing some of the vertebrae, the key ridge, and the neris. You are now ready to identify landmarks. So start by finding cella, which is the middle of the cella torsica outline, the midpoint, the exact midpoint. Then N, which is nasion, which indicates the most anterior part of the frontonasal suture. Next, A point and ANS. ANS is the most anterior part of the maxilla. A point is the deepest point on the concavity 
in the anterior portion of the maxilla. B point is the deepest point on the concavity of the anterior surface of the mandible. Pogonion is the most anterior part of the symphysis. Menton is the most inferior and in between the two you can find Nathion. At the angle of the mandible, the midpoint of the curvature is Gonion. Posterior nasal spine is the distal most or posterior most point on the maxilla. Orbitali is the inferior most point on the, tra the tracing of the orbit and then Porion is the top of the external auditory meatus outline. Articulari is just the um, intersection of the anterior cranial base with the outline of the ramus of the mandible. You can then start drawing your reference lines starting with SN line. This is the first horizontal line in your tracing and you want to mark it as SN. You can also draw Frankfurt horizontal if you're using that in your analysis between Porion and Orbitali. And you mark that as well. Next, you have the palatal plane, which is drawn between posterior and anterior nasal spine. You have then, um, you can mark palatal plane as well. Next, you have your functional occlusal plane. And the easiest way to find it is by finding the cusp tips of premolars and molars and then bisecting these cusp tips with a line that basically passes between um, most of posterior teeth. So that's your functional occlusal plane which is useful to check the inclination of the occlusal plane but also to also do your WITS analysis later on or WITS appraisal. The mandibular plane can be drawn different ways. The way we're doing it in Kuwait University is by using Gonion and Nathion. So you connect Gonion and Nathion with a line and this is considered mandibular plane. Now you can move on to drawing your vertical reference lines starting with the line that goes from N point to A point or NA. This line is useful to check the position of the maxilla. Next you can draw NB which is related to the sagittal position of the mandible. You can always mark these lines to make it easy to recognize which is which. Now you can move on to drawing the long axis of your incisors, which indicates the inclination of your anterior teeth, namely the central incisors. So you can draw with, uh, start with the maxillary incisors. You can call that max one. And then move on to your lower central incisor. Draw the lung axis and call it man one or mandibular one, indicating a little central incisor in the mandible. So the last line to draw is the E line as described by Ricketts, which indicates, which runs between the tip of the nose and soft tissue pogonion, and it is used to 
judge the lip position. Next, you can start measuring the different angles and linear measurements. You want to position your protractor in such a way that one line is uh, fits the SN line and then the other one, the movable one, you can move to fit NA. And you want to make sure that you're measuring the correct angle. So you position your protractor at the intersection and then line up the line with the first reference line and then line up the other movable part of the protractor with the other reference line. Sometimes the reference lines do not intersect. So to get around this, you use the series of parallel lines that are on your protractor. What this is doing basically, it's, it's almost like you're moving one of the reference lines next to the other so that they would intersect. You can then place the center of the protractor on the other line and start measuring the angle the normal way. 